How we doing, guys? And gals? I was talking to a gentleman one day. And we were talking about Warren Buffett. And I was talking about how Warren Buffett would had went to his um, neighbor. Who was a uh, big exec at Coca-Cola at the time. And I want to say that Warren was probably around 25 at this time. And he went over. And he asked these guys to invest with them. He declined. He, he, but before he declined, he said, well, let me just ask my wife. And I know a lot of times men uh, say this. Oh, let me go ask my spouse. A woman say you ask my spouse. Meaning, I'm meaning no. But that's just my way of kind of letting you down easily. So then what happened was he went in there. And came back to Warren and said, you know what? We, we declined your offer. Thank you, but we declined. And I want to say that that time that Warren wanted something about, and I could be wrong, around three to $4,000. Now, I know I'm not wrong in this number. That number, today, if that guy would have invested, would have been worth over $400 million. Choices. That was a bad choice. I sat with a lady one time and she said of a guy that would work with her, that worked with her, told her to invest in certain things. And every time he came and told her to invest, he was enthusiastic. One time he came, it was Microsoft. Another time he came, it was, it was, uh, I can't remember. She told me about at least four to five businesses, but I know one was Microsoft. Um, I know one was uh, Tesla. Tesla uh, did good. Um, and a few more. So I asked her, I said, uh, can I ask you a question? This guy that came to you and asked you all these things to invest in. And he gave you this advice. and He was so enthusiastic about it. What, what does he do today? She said, oh, he's been retired for about five years. And he's in his 50s. And he did it because of his choices. So every day we're faced with different choices to do the right thing, to do the wrong thing, to invest, to not invest, to start a business, to end a business, just different choices. But a lot of the times what stops us from making the right choice is the fear of the unknown. We think that just because fear is present, that we're just supposed to say no Because we don't like that feeling of fear Because it's uncomfortable It makes us feel bad It makes us have anxiety It's And when you have these type of feelings You're supposed to say no And get back into the comfort zone Because you know everything's about comfort But is it? Meaning When we say everything is about comfort <laughs> is it that the things that are great for us could be outside of the comfort zone? The things that make us wealthy, that make us known when we die are outside of the comfort zone. You know, I look at the lives of writers and men who were great actors these people weren't promised anything. All they did was just believe in their creativity and be consistent. Some people thought they were doing foolish men work because people think that the way to work is to do things that other people are doing. Get your job, get off your butt, stop being lazy because being creativity doesn't make money but yet we go to theaters on weekends we turn on the radio and listen to creative people we go to art galleries and look at creative people's work 
We go to uh, Barnes and Nobles and Kindle. We buy creatives, people work. But yet the people who are silent are the people that go out and make someone else's dreams come true. And when we have children and people we know that are trying to get in that creative space, we shun them, we put them down, we call them stupid, we call them potheads, we call them be, being a, an adult, be responsible. But what if those people who we admire today would have listened to us? What if they would have listened? What if Michael Jackson would have listened? Well, he had a support team. You know, but Ernest Hemingway, what if Einstein would have listened to his teachers and said he wasn't going to be anything in his life? What if he would have listened? It was a strange thing he was doing. He didn't fit in that world, which is why he went against it all the time. This is probably why he stared off into space. Why these teachers who are teaching kids to be normal. And, you know, you go in normal. Normal is good. When has normal been the business model for success? Normal people go watch creative people. The our school system, unless you're in Juilliard or, you know, these uh, creative high schools, which I think every ADHD kid should be in. But we have this system of no, this, this, this sense of normality that's go around that somehow we think that normal is good. You see, I could talk about this one for a long time. But I can't. Our attention span is so so short now that I have to do quick videos. So I'm going to end this video as this. Uh, maybe this is something that I will talk about more on one of my live Google chats where I could talk a little more. But let me see what you guys have to say about this. Let's just start the conversation. So with that said, guys, thank you. And until next time. Signing off.